Hello, I'm Dennis from Respect Studios and uh, I have decided to start a new series of tutorials which will be the new futures where I'm going to explain how the new futures of Unity works so we're starting with 5.3 which came out a few days ago and uh, I'm going to go through all of the major new futures which are pretty interesting for me uh, we're going to start with scene management, which is awesome. Uh, Unity put a lot of work in that and it's working very logical and very good. So uh, let's just first think about how uh, the, the games are made in this way. If we take for example, I'm going to mention some famous games here, so you, you all know what I'm talking about. I guess most of you have played them. If we talk about, for example, Limbo, which is a platformer game, uh, it's uh, like a one huge level. It doesn't have loading. It doesn't have uh, uh, different levels. It's 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 just start from start to end. So, if you think about that and uh, you try to make a game like this and you don't know how exactly the things work, you might think that you have to create the whole level in one scene, which will be absolutely not working because if you make uh, that that huge level in one scene even if you add some triggers to load new chunks of data and unload the previous ones that might work actually but will involve a lot of work and uh, you will have a huge scene which will be pretty time consuming uh, it's hard for the people who if, if there are a uh, few persons who work on the game it will be hard for them to work like uh, together <coughs> so scene management is very good for that the other type of games where you see uh, loadings but not actually loading but for let's take for example the last of us which is a third person game uh, you don't see loading there but there are cut scenes so a lot of the studios that do games like this are actually using cutscenes to do the loading so when you watch the cutscene uh, the game is actually loading the new the new part of the game so this is how when they use cutscenes but if you don't want to use cutscenes or loading or whatever and you want to do a game like uh, Limbo which is from start to end point you have to do scene management or Previously, you have to do some triggers which load and unload data. So let's see how scene management works. Uh, when you open that package where you can find it in the link below the video in the info, you will have uh, this scene management folder and there will be a prefabs which will have a player and uh, and there will be scenes which will have the main scene and the uh, script that script is for the camera and there will be one more script actually one moment so sorry about that i have moved the script so you have two two scripts one is the camera follow and one is the player move uh, if you play now you will see that you can move with the arrows or a with d with the space you can jump and uh, the camera is just following the player so let's say that uh, you want to have a progressive loading of the of the level. What are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to select this part here. I will delete this. So I will leave just uh, how much are they? One, two, three. Yeah, actually two. There are two two pieces. And let's say that. Uh, you want to reach for the foot to that point and then load a new level and when you go here you want to unload the previous level because you won't need it anymore so let's first look at the docs what they say you can search for scene management <coughs> oops let me actually see what scene manager when you type scene manager it will 
open it now you can use a lot of stuff but first let's set up the scenes this scene as you see it let's press ctrl shift and s and just uh, I will save it inside scenes inside scenes and I'm going to say uh, let's say level 1 part 0 1 and then I'm going to press for actually first I'm going to delete the player and the main camera you don't need them I'm going to delete the directional light you don't need that and I'm going to control shift s go to the scenes again and save it like uh, level 1 part 2 now the good thing in unity is that you can merge a few scenes into one which is great because this is how you actually do the whole game you can so for example I'm going to open uh, level 1 part 1 which is the first part of the scene and then I'm going to select the second scene and drag it in the hierarchy and now you have part 2 and part 1 and you can double click on them to move to the other scene so I'm going to select part 2 all of the objects grounds and the background just select them too and I'm going to move them away now this is from scene 2 the great thing is that you can press ctrl s to save and it will save both scenes uh, all the all the changes that you make to both scenes so for example if I take this and move it here take this and move it down and save if I go to scene 1 you can see that this is moved here I'm going to move it down again so if you go to scene 2 you can see that this is moved down so this is a great way to save all of the scenes while working on only one reference to all scenes so let's say that this is the first part of your level and you think that this is enough uh, to make it yeah. so uh, let me say that again let's say that this is the part of the level that you think is big enough to be in one scene and uh, loaded at the start so it's not too big or too small it might be too small but anyway and you want this to be the second part of the scene because if you put them both in one scene it will get too heavy and uh, it might start doing problems it will eat the uh, memory of the device that it's getting played so let's say that you want to make the character when he, he comes here the player or actually when he comes about here everything to from that scene gets loaded and for this reason we're going to select all of the pieces and we're going to make them smaller uh, now general rule is that you have to make something some place where the player can go and he can't go back and if you notice if you play limbo for example you can see that if you pay attention you will see that there are places where you slide down or you fall down from some place and you can't go up again and this is the places where the new part of the level is getting loaded and the, or the old part of the level is getting unloaded so in our example we're going to make it like this <coughs> so when the player goes here and uh, you can see that we can jump we can jump that that high and uh, when we fall down from here we can't go up so this is the place where you can for example like here unload all of the pieces but not only that we're going to go to scene 2 select all these pieces now if you want to edit some of the scenes you have to double click on it and uh, in our case we want to add some pieces to scene 2 because if we add them to scene 1 they will get unloaded so let's select scene 2 select all of these pieces and move them away now we're going to uh, select the level elements and uh, create a cube let's just uh, like scale it to be actually that big okay that's good enough then scale it like this and uh, like this so for example we're going to make two pieces that uh, he 
can jump on like here and then here and uh, for example you can make these pieces to collapse when he jumps on them or to disappear or something like that so uh, he don't have to see that this level is getting unloaded or it might be a door or something like that so we'll leave these pieces here and they are in scene 2 let's save the scenes and now <coughs> let's see where we have to add the triggers we're going to add one simple trigger so let's say that we are going to do it uh, right about here to this column let's go to scene 1 this is where we're going to add one empty object uh, create game object create empty and let's name it uh, scene triggers we're going to reset its position we're going to add one empty game object okay uh, one more time empty game object we're going to add the physics box collider put it here make it like no it has to be put it in uh, make it like this and uh, like this uh, make it taller so the player can't jump over it and uh, make it trigger okay now in the folders go to scripts create new c sharp load scene to c sharp and uh, i'm going to make one more folder here so everything is arranged scene load scripts uh, we have that and then actually uh, you can make for example if you have a lot of scenes that have to be loaded you can make for example one integer just ask which asks which scene have to be loaded now uh, let's select the scene load script again and make another c sharp script which will be unload scene actually we're going to make them generic so i'm going to select that script and I'm going to I, uh, you, I don't know if you know that but you can rename scripts but not from here because here it will give you an error because the name of the script have to be the same as the name of the class so you can uh, double click on the name of the class go to refactor rename and we're going to say load scene underscore c sharp press ok and then save the script when you go back to unity the script is renamed we have to do the same for this because I am usually adding uh, underscore cs um, load scene override file, ok, no problem ok, now let's open the load scene script let's delete this because we don't need them uh, let's make one public integer which will be scene to load now you can use string if you want if you have a lot of scenes and you want to load the name uh, the scene as the name so if you want to load the scene as like level one part two you have to use string but i'm going to use integers because i, I will know in this case which is the scene uh, let's make sure that we're in scene in level one here let's select that game object and say load level two trigger let's select the load scene and place it here so now we can choose which scene we want to load uh, let's go here let's type void on trigger enter collider collider and here do we have yeah, here if you want, uh, like you can type if uh, other that tag is equal to player, and we're going to say just for debugging debug dot log load scene. Now, if we trigger that, if we go to that trigger, let's select it and uh, add some some label to it, so we can select it easier. Now if we go to that trigger, Unity should debug that we are entering the trigger and I'm going to move it because... Okay, we have load scene. 
so it's working now mm, first of all what we have to do is go to sub file build settings and you have to make sure that the scenes that you want to load are in the build settings because otherwise you don't know which scenes you want to load they have to be here and this is the numbers that we're going to use scene 0 scene 1 so uh, we're going to load the other scenes now and uh, we're going to do that in the next level so uh, next video sorry not level <laughs> see ya